Hey guys, I'm back with the fourth video of the video series on class 10 science life processes and in this video we are going to learn about respiration in plants. In the previous videos we have already learned about the nutrition in plants wherein we also talked about photosynthesis. So now let's see how respiration happens in plants. So in plants, gaseous exchange will take place through diffusion. What is diffusion? We know diffusion is a process where particles move from one medium to another medium such that it always moves from the medium of higher concentration towards the medium of lower concentration, right? So that is diffusion. So here also gaseous exchange will take place through diffusion. For example, for example, we take the gas carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide will move or will uh, get transferred from the external environment inside the plants when the concentration of carbon dioxide in the external environment is more than that inside the plants. Right? So based on the difference in concentration, the exchange of gases will take place. What are the gases that are exchanged? Oxygen and carbon dioxide. So we have seen in the process of photosynthesis. What happens in photosynthesis? We see that a carbon dioxide is a gas which is needed for photosynthesis. Right? So therefore exchange of carbon dioxide had to take place, intake of carbon dioxide had to take place. At the same time we saw that in photosynthesis oxygen was released. So oxygen was a product. So oxygen was to be thrown out of the plants. Again in respiration we saw that oxygen is utilized. So again you need oxygen. So the plants need to intake oxygen. And in respiration carbon dioxide is produced as a byproduct. So it needs to be thrown out. So these are the two gases which are involved in plants during the process of photosynthesis and respiration. So these two gases are mainly exchanged. Now the question is how or which part of the plant actually takes part in this gaseous exchange. So this diffusion takes place through stomata. I have already discussed what are stomata. They are tiny pores which are present on the surface of the leaves. So tiny pores which are present on the surface of these leaves. So that is stomata. It can also happen through lenticels. Now what are lenticels? These are porous tissue with cells having large intercellular spaces. So here you can see lenticels. So on the bark of a tree, do you see here some pores like structure? I think you would have seen it in very old trees in your locality also. So these kind of pores are known as lenticels. They are not actually pores, they are tissue which have pores. So that is why they are called porous tissue with cells having large intercellular spaces. It also happens through the root surface. How from the root surface? Especially through the root hairs. Because the root hairs are in direct contact with the soil and the soil is also enriched with gases like oxygen. So the root hairs, are, are, since being in direct contact with the oxygen in soil, so diffusion of oxygen can take, can take place across the root hairs. So however we have these three different ways by which diffusion takes place but most of the diffusion or most of the gaseous exchange happens through stomata. So most of the exchange takes place through stomata. Now let us talk about the direction of diffusion and I said that Okay, these are the two gases which the plants will exchange. One is oxygen and one is carbon dioxide. Now, what would be the direction of diffusion? Whether oxygen will move out of the plants into the atmosphere or it will come from outside to inside or whether carbon dioxide will come from inside to outside or how is it? So let us try to understand that how this direction of diffusion is decided in plants. The direction of diffusion depends upon the environmental conditions and the requirements of the plant. So what do I mean by these two terms, environmental conditions and the requirements of the plant? So let us look at it. Now what are the two main processes which take place inside plants? One is photosynthesis and the second one is respiration. Right? So what happens during photosynthesis? So if you look at the process of photosynthesis, carbon dioxide combines with water 
carbon dioxide combines with water in presence of light and chlorophyll it forms glucose that is C6H12O6 plus oxygen plus energy so this is the equation of photosynthesis and what happens in respiration in respiration glucose is broken down or glucose is oxidized to give carbon dioxide plus water plus energy okay right? so what do we see in photosynthesis in this process this process utilizes carbon dioxide so this process needs carbon dioxide whereas these this process that is respiration it needs oxygen right so so the beauty in these two equations is that the product of photosynthesis is utilized by respiration product of photosynthesis is oxygen and respiration needs this oxygen similarly the product of respiration is carbon dioxide and photosynthesis needs this carbon dioxide so the product of photosynthesis is utilized by respiration and the product of respiration is utilized by photosynthesis right so this is clear to you so whatever is released that is not getting wasted that is used up for the other process now the question is does these two processes keep happening inside the plants 24 by 7 no so there arises the problem the process of photosynthesis so when i talk of photosynthesis it happens only in presence of sunlight so that means this process will take place only during the daytime there will be no photosynthesis at night right so during the daytime respiration as well as photosynthesis both occur so carbon dioxide which is produced during respiration is used up in photosynthesis and the oxygen which is produced in photosynthesis is used up by respiration but it is seen that the rate of photosynthesis is faster during the daytime so when i am talking about the day so during daytime what happens both respiration and photosynthesis both of them take place so in respiration carbon dioxide is produced which is used up by photosynthesis in photosynthesis oxygen is produced which is used up by respiration right but during the daytime the rate of photosynthesis rate of photosynthesis is greater than the rate of respiration that means photosynthesis happens faster than respiration now if photosynthesis happens faster that means more oxygen will be released when compared to carbon dioxide that means let us suppose if one equation or if one process of respiration takes place maybe by that time two three processes of photosynthesis has taken place so as the process happens faster so the more amount of the product will be released so if photo rate of photosynthesis is greater than the rate of respiration that means oxygen released would be more than carbon dioxide therefore net production of oxygen is more right now if the net production of oxygen is more then what will the plants do with that oxygen they will throw that out right so that means during the daytime photosynthesis will produce oxygen but it will produce more oxygen than required by respiration so whatever is required by respiration that the respiration process will be utilized but the remaining amount of oxygen will be thrown out so during the daytime what will happen carbon dioxide so overall if you look at the two processes during daytime so during daytime what will happen carbon dioxide will be taken in and oxygen will be given out this is what happens during the daytime so plants will take in carbon dioxide and plants will give out oxygen so that is what that happens at daytime now what happens at night now at night there is no sunlight therefore no photosynthesis so that means only respiration takes place at night and what happens in respiration so if you look at the process of respiration respiration will utilize carbon dioxide and it will produce co2 
right so this co2 which is produced is diffused to the environment so the extra carbon dioxide which is produced is diffused to the environment at night time so therefore the direction of diffusion in plants varies with the environmental conditions now you understand what does it mean by environmental condition because whether it is daytime or night time it also depends on that because whether sunlight is present or not because photosynthesis depends on the environmental conditions and the second is requirements of the plant that means what does the plant need if the plant want to perform photosynthesis it needs more and more carbon dioxide if the plants want to respire then it needs more and more oxygen so the environmental conditions and the requirements of the plant these two factors govern the direction of diffusion which gas will diffuse in which direction clear okay so let us look at the difference between day and night so what happens during the daytime when photosynthesis can take place due to the presence of sunlight so the carbon dioxide will move from plant to atmosphere so movement of carbon dioxide from plant to the atmosphere is the major so movement of i'm sorry not carbon dioxide movement of oxygen so movement of oxygen during the daytime from the plant to the atmosphere that is the major event right because during the daytime photosynthesis and uh, respiration both will occur since the rate of photosynthesis will be higher therefore more and more oxygen will be produced so whatever amount of oxygen is utilized by respiration the remaining amount will be thrown out to the atmosphere whereas at night time what happens there is no photosynthesis so only respiration takes place so in respiration the plant will take in oxygen and it will give out carbon dioxide right so this is how there is a difference during the day and during night so now that we have reached towards the end of our discussion on respiration in plants let us quickly conclude what all we discussed during night carbon dioxide diffuses out from the plants to the environment because only respiration happens during daytime oxygen diffuses from plants to the environment because the rate of photosynthesis is higher than the rate of respiration exchange of gases between plants and environment occur through stom stomata lenticels or root hairs however most of the exchange happens through stomata internal transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide occurs through the intercellular spaces in plant tissues because till now we were only talking about how the exchange of gases will take place between plants and the environment so we were basically talking about the exchange of gases either between the stomata and the environment or between the lenticels and the environment or the root hairs and the environment but that gas also needs to be transported to all other parts of the plant so that internal transport is taken care by the intercellular spaces because in plant tissues there is some at and many of the plant tissues there is a lot of intercellular space and those intercellular space actually helps in carrying the gases from one part of the plant to the other so now you would have noticed one thing that in case of plants we don't talk about the food breakdown why because plants make their own food and they make food in a simple form so plants do not have a holozoic nutrition we talk about the breakdown of food like we talked about the process of digestion and all only in case of animals because they take in complex food right so respiration in in case of plants is all about the exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen between plants and the environment so that they can prepare their own food so that they can also oxidize the glucose to produce energy so here we do not have the concept of breaking down the food but at the same time the glucose with the simple food which was prepared that is stored in the plants and that is then oxidized to release that energy which can be utilized for many other purposes i hope this video was useful in the next video we are going to learn about respiration in aquatic as well as terrestrial animals so stay tuned